All right. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Welcome to our webinar today. I'm Thomas von Larcher. I'm managing editor of the journal SN Applied Sciences, and I'm here to help uh, running the meeting today. So today we have Professor Stavros Schiedes from University of Portsmouth with us. So uh, Stavros, we are proud to have you on our webinar today. And uh, Pro Professor Schiedes is senior lecturer in cybersecurity at the University of Portsmouth in UK. And he worked as an expert in cybersecurity and digital forensics in the UK and the EU, European Union, serving companies and research councils. His research interests span in the broad area of cybersecurity and more specific, specifically in open source intelligence. Dr. Shielis has authored more than 70 publications in academic journals and conferences, and uh, he is actively involved in research projects as principal investigator leading his cybersecurity research team. And last but not least, as I already mentioned, um, Professor Shielis is guest editor or one of the guest editors of the journal's topical collection cybersecurity digital forensics and resilience this topical collection is still open for submission so again uh Stavros, welcome to our webinar so we will have time for questions after the talk so um, please type your question into the chat box as we go, or after the talk, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. And with this, I hand uh, over to Professor Shailis and uh, Stavros, the floor is yours. Thank you, Thomas, for the introduction. Let me share my screen. Uh, so do you see uh, the presentation? Yes, we can okay. see the presentation. Maybe you can switch to presenter mode. Yes, I will. Uh, I will do it like this. Do you see it? Yeah, perfect. perfect. Okay, <clears throat> great. So, yeah. So, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for the introduction. So, uh, today we're going to present a, a bit of my uh, current research, what we do uh, the last, uh, I will say, three years, uh, which is called machine learning anomaly detection using binary visualization. Uh, as Thomas said, I am uh, from the University of Portsmouth. I'm working here as a senior lecturer, and I have a series, I mean, I'm dealing a lot with cybersecurity, and I hold also some series of uh, professional certifications showing that I'm involving also in the industry as a consultant. So uh, this work uh, started as an idea, then we get funded from uh, European Union uh, under the agreement 786698 uh, through the horizon 2020. Through, uh, the project was called uh, Cybertrust, it's ended now. Uh, so European Union really uh, boost our ideas, our research with the funding, and you will see what we did and what we are still producing through this uh, presentation. So uh, the outline of today, it's, uh, I'm going to have some introduction about the problem, how all started, security issues, our current research on these security issues, uh, the experimental results, how all of this research applied in the cyber trust funded project then what we did extra using some spam enhancements for this ips we develop and some conclusions some questions uh, later on in the end so uh, it's as you already know in terms of things uh, it's a big uh, let's say uh, subject to, to, to discuss uh, all of uh, people are dealing with Internet of Things ecosystem. Uh, everything will be connected. Uh, this is the future. Okay. And some statistics that we retrieve from uh, analytics uh, research, geo analytics uh, research, 
is as you can see that there is an exponential uh, increase on the numbers of your devices is predicted to be uh, in 2025 uh, 34.2 billion devices connected. Uh, so as you understand the amount of devices uh, that they will be online, it's huge. That means uh, huge also uh, issues. Okay, so based uh, on, on that, uh, we, we explored, okay, we said, great, Internet of Things, all of these devices, very nice. So what are the threats uh, for all of this? I mean, we knew that there are threats on computers, but uh, we're talking here from when we talk about Internet of Things, it's not only computers, it's wearable like watches, which let's say the Samsung watch, for example, is running Tizen, different operating system. There are different operating systems. There is uh, uh, a variety of um, different, let's say, hardware and processing power. So we explore a little bit this all this uh, threat landscape and we could see that uh, they are uh, applying many things and also the things that they're applying systems, current computer system like DOS, DDoS, um, uh, and, pl pl and plenty other uh, problems. Uh, that they are um, related with the operating system running and also the protocols, the internet protocol that they use, like for example, Zigbee. So, uh, based on this uh, research, we came in to, to investigate more what happened. So we see uh, malware like Hydra, Cybot, Tsunami, Trojans, Myra, very well known later on, uh, and Brickerbot. Uh, that's some of them uh, based on the Kaspersky Labs uh, research. But uh, we was, let's say, intrigued with from the uh, easiness that Myra could uh, penetrate all of these systems. And uh, it was uh, well known that uh, 600,000 uh, devices were uh, compromised from my eye uh, when it was running. So that led us to the question, uh, okay, we have so many uh, intrusion detection, intrusion prevention systems. Uh, so what they fail to do? So we, we, we check uh, Snort, as you already know, we check uh, Bro, which now is called Zikt. Uh, we checked uh, Suricata and uh, we found that, okay, they have some very good engines behind that. Uh, we published also a comparison report. Uh, but all the issue, let's say it was on the on the, on the fact that, okay, if the signature is not there, then it will not be directed. Or also, uh, it's well known from these systems, that there is many false positives uh, or false negative alerts, which is a big, again, research issue uh, investigated from various researchers. Uh, so, um, uh, I'm going to go a little bit about what is signature-based detection and uh, what's the difference. So signature-based network intrusion detection system, basically they have, uh, they have the detection engine and they have like a, a files that is looking inside the packet and it finds some patterns inside the packet. Uh, of course, in order this to, be, uh, to, to work, this signature, this packet, it needs to be provided by someone. So there are many security films and open source community that they are working analyzing my, uh, malicious uh, um, software, uh, malware, and Trojan uh, virus, etc. And they look their activity through the internet. They check inside the, they do reverse engineer maybe in the malware, no, maybe they do. And they find this, uh, unique strings, let's say, which they can export and add in the uh, in the file. 
uh, so the system will detect and uh, and report let's say uh, this uh, um, this uh, malware this network activity as malicious uh, we need to highlight that the difference between ITS and IPS is that ITS uh, is just uh, reporting IPS is also uh, mitigate the attack of course you can make an IDS uh, as an IPS. Uh, there are some modules, for example, SNORT, which is an open source. It's acting as IDS, but there are modules so you can use, for example, uh, uh, IP tables to block an, an alert. Uh, the thing, another issue uh, that we identify, which I will uh, explain later on during the Cybertrust project, uh, which was part again of the research but not conducted uh, from our lab it was conducted from another partner uh, it was that okay uh, the ips is blocking and allow it, it, the ips sorry is blocking or allow the traffic through the firewall rules but is this the best solution for an actor for example if we're talking about a critical infrastructure and you apply uh, for example, block this cut, uh, block this uh, this device, this PLC from accessing this. It could be a problem. For example, stop uh, electricity in an area or uh, create another damage. So that was another uh, thing that was uh, came through all of this uh, research of literature. So uh, as I said. Uh, but I will explain it later on uh, through this process. Now we'll talk only on the IDS part, on the IDS IPS part, and the limitations of these signatures, which, as you understand, if the signature is not available in the file, it will be the malware will be undetected. Also, we, we, we know that malware, they keep evolving. They use techniques uh, like obfuscation, et cetera, to hide their traces. Uh, moreover, uh, the, the malware, we have variation. For example, we have malware one, and then we have the new generation of the same malware, which is called malware two, three, et cetera. So the attackers, they keep changing their code, but that needs a lot of time for researchers to go through and analyze the new version of malware find this sequence uh, of strings in order to update the antivirus and we keep going. All of this is time consuming. And also you cannot be productive from zero days as you understand. So ideally we need a system that it will be, okay, of course you need to train something. We need to use some machine learning. Uh, we need to use something that it will learn automatically through the process and keep evolving. So that was uh, the solution we came into. Yeah, we wanted to stop this signature-based need, okay? And be effective in zero-day malware. That was uh, a very big, um, let's say, to be very effective for zero-day malware, this is a big, big uh, research subject. Uh, because as I said, uh, Attackers now they use uh, methods with obfuscation, they use encryption, they use many things, uh, make it even harder to detect. So in this respect, uh, you will see that there is a lot of uh, there is uh, there is a need for more research. So I will talk a little bit here about the solution we came through. Uh, the solution is we built a new, let's say, uh, system, a new uh, IPS. Uh, so basically, we, we have the network traffic coming. Uh, as the network uh, traffic is coming, we keep a buffering uh, because you maybe have a high uh, throughput, high um, flow network traffic. So we have the buffer, and from this, uh, this buffer, we have segments of traffic. Uh, so we, we chunk it into small pieces, and these pieces, they are converted to 
some pictures. And these pictures then we use uh, machine learning to analyze and compare it with uh, some uh, uh, data set that we had, we built uh, in order to find uh, if it's malware or not. So I will go into more detail about this engine and how it works and uh, the pictures, how we've been provided, etc., and some issues we had. And uh, yes, in the next slide. So uh, the first issue, I mean, it was the network traffic collection. So here we had two major tasks. Uh, we have the traffic collection and the traffic storage. As you understand, when you have a high, uh, a lot of traffic coming from your network card, you know, cards have a specific uh, capabilities. So first of all, you need space uh, in order to keep this traffic. Uh, also, you need the uh, space for the images. So you need to convert this, uh, this traffic into images. Of course, here is coming the question, even if uh, why images, which we are going to discuss it in the next slides. So two, it was some major task. So we we'll find a solution. Okay, we had uh, uh, a lot of space. I mean, in the hard disk that we use, that was easily um, solved. And then we had uh, some the traffic collection. We uh, use uh, uh, had an access. Uh, to a US university and also the university here of Portsmouth, they give me access uh, to data. So I had a lot of data and uh, very valuable uh, data, which I could use then uh, some traffic generator, which would run a research again on traffic generator, what is better to be used for high flow. We end up with Ostinator uh, generator and we manage to do our test all with real basically traffic, even if we uh, reproducing this traffic through our lab, but the data were real from sources from universities. Uh, so we could uh, actually test our uh, results. Uh, so I said before, okay, we have the traffic coming, we have segments, and these segments, this small portion of traffic, continuously, it was converted into image. So here is raising the question, why? Why images? The, why you don't do it with uh, some features? Uh, in the literature review, there is, I will say, thousands of methods with features. Um, also, with uh, in the time when I start uh, uh, visualize this uh, concept with visualization, there were not many with pictures. Also, even if there were uh, various uh, ideas with visualization of traffic, uh, I said, "Okay, we have machine learning. What is the best for machine learning? I mean, we have all of these algorithms um, proposed by." Uh, various researchers, which they were for images. So I thought that, okay, uh, based that all the work currently was done about images, about recognizing face, uh, the machine. So I thought that uh, it's more mature the, uh, the area of uh, machine learning in this respect, instead of just using features, etc. Uh, so th that it was uh, my initial thoughts, and I was researching a bit about uh, this: uh, how I can produce from a code something that it will be a picture and will be helpful for the machine. And I ended up with some uh, uh, research uh, done. Uh, from another guy uh, from uh, Binvis. Uh, so I found it interesting, uh, um, this uh, research, uh, and it was some publication. I said, okay, let's give it a try. So what was the idea? It was simple, basically. The idea of Binvis is basically it used these five uh, colors, okay? 
based on the ASCII table. And based on this uh, ASCII representation of the binary of the, of the malware or the traffic, whatever, because it was binary, uh, it com is converting to this picture, as you can see. This is binary from normal pickup file. As you can see, they are mostly red, uh, some dots with black and some blue. Sometimes it's red, blue like this, okay? And sometimes it's like this. And as you can see from the caption below, uh, this is specifically, uh, this is uh, malware. So this is a botnet and this is uh, a backdoor, okay? Uh, and you can see the difference. I mean, it's obvious uh, for, from your eye, the difference. Um, so that basically this representation, because we run many uh, experiments before we decide to go into the machine learning and train it and produce these data sets, which we share, by the way, uh, they are online. You can find our data sets uh, online. Um, uh, because we can see the difference with the eye, we thought that, okay, that would be good for the machine learning to test it. So we went to the next part. We try, I, I say here, ResNet 50 uh, algorithm, but in reality, we try many algorithms. We try in sewing, uh, CNN, um, many different uh, proposed current solutions, uh, mobile net, etc. Uh, so we try many machine learning algorithms to see the results. So we produce from our data set uh, a lot of data in order to train the, the machine, okay? And we have a, a testing, as you know, and uh, sorry, a training and testing uh, uh, data set, as you already know. So uh, in the end, after we did all of this test, et cetera, we ended with two basically um, candidates, the ResNet 50 and the uh, mobile net. So we ran these experiments uh, with ResNet. Uh, I said ResNet because it was the best, let's say uh, we had the best result we had. So running all of these experiments, we came, uh, we have this uh, in a small machine We're using an NVIDIA GTX uh, 1060 GPU. Uh, so uh, as you can see, uh, this is our Marvel sample. We have 23% Trojans, botanists. We have various things, okay? And all of these things, uh, we merge it with normal traffic and uh, the, we calculate the, the accuracy, the precision, the recall and F1 score. And this will be, this was the results. Uh, so we had some, uh, of course, uh, errors, loss, etc., and training loss. Uh, but generally the results, uh, they were really high. Uh, so we, we reach 95.78% and uh, we're talking here about the system uh, that uh, it will not need uh, training. It will continue to be trained uh, by the, the, the uh, traffic that it will be captured. Uh, so high, I mean, uh, I see works that they, are, they were they speak about some other numbers, um, maybe sometimes 98%, etc. But uh, not the way that we envision this and the experimental results that we run, especially for online, something that it was on network. Uh, a big challenge, uh, and you will wonder it's okay, is not uh, time consuming, uh, to convert the traffic to image, et cetera. Yes, it did, it is. 
but uh, we uh, in the beginning when we ran this uh, experiment, I mean, it was just to make sure that uh, our method it works, it has results before we move to optimize it and make it better. So uh, initially we, it was really slow, all of this procedure, but then we manage using uh, uh, coding using some other language and low level languages plus uh, GPU, uh, it is really fast. Uh, this conversion, I mean, we reduce the picture, we, we, we check what should be the picture size uh, to have a decent detection because you can have 32 uh, multiple, 32, 64, 64, you can have 256 or even bigger pictures, but bigger the picture means more the time to produce it. Of course, it will be better quality, more uh, details on the ASCII table, this representation in this, but more time. So we wanted to reduce the time and keep the important information. Uh, so we managed to do that through various research and reducing and play with the picture size. And we came with very good accuracy, very good uh, speed, and uh, and uh, and could be uh, trained all the time uh, by itself. So the important uh, for me here uh, about the accuracy, it was uh, showing is here. It's a algorithm that was pro proposed by uh, some J Japanese. Uh, uh, researchers, which I find very, very interesting as an algorithm. It's self-organized neural network. Uh, uh, so we try this as well. And with ResNet, as you can see, we have uh, a lot better results. And Sorry. It's, it's fine, Stavros, we can hear you. Ah, sorry, because I'm hearing uh, something. Oh, ah, really? okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, here, basically, uh, we have the cyber trust uh, project and how this is been uh, used in in cyber trust so give me a second uh, i have some issue here okay so here uh, how this research then it was applying Cybertrust project. So the Cybertrust project, basically, it was a, a project uh, that it was dealing about securing Internet of Things. And uh, it was dealing with uh, the one part was uh, ISP and the other part was home network. Uh, so in the home network, we considered that uh, and it was basically uh, was in, intrigued from the uh, Myrai, uh, how it was affected all these uh, issues. So we said, if Myrai could uh, infiltrate all of these networks so easily, so we need protection. So the protection, it should start from home and it will be extended in the uh, ISP. So this machine learning uh, module was running basically this system on the ISP side. And here in the home, we had a lighter version on the gateway uh, of this uh, uh, machine learning, which was giving feedback basically to the machine learning on the ISP on the cloud. So all the uh, learning procedure, everything was on the cloud. Uh, and based on the cloud uh, here, it was providing uh, the appropriate results where this was going to uh, be happen. So uh, the 
other interesting things uh, thing about the the cyber trust project it was what i said before the the response uh, so this system here in the isp it was uh, providing the result okay this is malware or this is not malware this result was provided to this intelligent response module where uh, a partner basically nicolaus kologotronis from uh, uh, university of peloponnese uh, built a new research on that uh, respect uh, using uh, some graph theory so based on graph theory uh, uh, we had the intelligent results basically what it should be done in the smart home for example block the smart meter allow the smart meter isolate the smart meter through sdn um, or block the completely the network of the house in order not to affect more houses depending on the criticality uh, of this uh, monitoring or the on this malware on this infection uh, it was uh, coming an intelligent response from this module, which is really interesting work. Uh, if you are interested, we can arrange another uh, uh, seminar, which uh, Thomas will can invite uh, uh, Nikos and talk about uh, his uh, research work on this respect. So uh, we apply this uh, here, this machine learning, and this is some along with Surikata. So we had Surikata in our systems, we monitor all of this uh, uh, information and we modify our system, uh, our machine learning to report uh, things uh, as Surikata engine. So we we'll use Elasticsearch and all of these nice things. So we had a, a nice also a graphical interface which you could see the attacks. As you can see, I had my data set were from US and from UK. So that's the reason you see this heat map here uh from coming from us because uh, it was from my data sets and you can see a nice statistics showing which attacks ssh uh, the request this is where the spikes are when we fire the attacks here it was uh, traffic the flow uh, and it was reporting nicely all of these um, things so that was part of the cyber trust and then uh, we came into more uh, questions, research question, and we was wondering, okay, what else? I mean, we have a nice IPS running fine. We have good results. We improve it. It's fast. Uh, of course, always you can do better to raise the accuracy, but we notice that more the attacks and the training happening, we, the accuracy was going up and up each time. Uh, so that was good news for in our case. So we said, okay, what if we're looking at something more? I mean, uh, to have a holistic security approach. In this respect, we was uh, thinking uh, we had, uh, let's say, we thought two new things to be added. One was, uh, uh, sorry, one was phishing, which was costing 12.5 billion worldwide. And the other one was insider threats. About the late insider threats, I'm not going to talk because it's a big uh, research and I don't think we have the time, but I will talk also about what we did in phishing, which this was uh, um, basically, it, it, it was interesting. Uh, I had some emails about from some US uh, uh, interested about uh, how we came into this approach and they want to put in some new some uh, uh, blocks that they have there and uh, and they ask me various questions. So uh, famous phishing uh, based on new research, it was the operation uh, fish fry if you can if you have here which cost, 1.5 million and it was involved in Bank of America and Wells Franco. And the Swedish bank case, which it was a malware, it was a custom uh, L33 TAF0 Trojan. This is it's called Lito in, let's say, in the language of hackers. Trojan, which cost 1.4 million. So, uh, 
basically what you can do to currently to detect uh, phishing, it was they use poor spelling, they use uh, some um, uh, lack of functionality in buttons, links, SSL protection, in current URLs. This is what they do currently to detect the uh, phishing. However, as you can understand, is not uh, sufficient. And uh, what we came into this, uh, all of this is what is currently what is available, blacklisting, visual similarity, etc. But as you understand, it's not sufficient because uh, uh, we have many companies being compromised um, from phishing attacks. Some interesting uh, methods that they are available, it's uh, using NeuroFuzzy. So they use fuzzy logical neural networks. They propose features again, uh, and like URL, if it was in the fish tank, etc. And the other one was Candina Plus, uh, which is uh, a search engine, which is uh, having uh, classification for normal and phishing sites. And again, it's using features like IP, page rank, and all of these things. Again, we thought that features, uh, we have this work already done with images. Uh, let's see how we can apply it in, uh, in this context of phishing. So what we came, uh, we wanted uh, method basically not rely on features e or if this uh, IP is uh, it's available or not as a blacklist IP. So uh, we want to simplify things and also the machine to learn by itself and not depending on anything else by itself. Uh, so again, uh, we came here, okay, let's see a little bit the source code of phishing websites and let's see the source code of the actual uh, websites. Um, we did that. We, of course, as you understand, we noticed many changes, many differences. And uh, I had the, this crazy idea, as I said, okay, let's see how we can convert the HTML code. The problem is to convert it in order to be readable again for the machine to understand the difference. Let's find a way to do this. Again, we try uh, this uh, being this initially uh, to see if indeed uh, it could be a difference. And I will come back to that. So this is uh, a phishing, as you can see, example. This is how it is. And this is the actual, the PayPal, as you can see. I will go fast. You see the image. As you can understand by, uh, you can see the difference. There is a difference with your, your eyes. So we thought again, okay, yes, the machine will understand it. Uh, the idea again, it was to convert the HTML code. This is some uh, string, etc., and converting with these five colors RGB values from the uh, BinVis tool. Uh, for the BinVis, we use the we use the Hilbert curve uh, methodology that is there. There are four or five methods inside that which you can use, but we use that. And uh, we went to fish tank. We download many uh, phishing websites, many, and we converted. And also we went to PayPal and many other websites uh, well known which they use in the phishing. So we was finding the phishing and the original, and we create and data sets for that. We train our uh, model. We use this time TensorFlow with mobile net and TensorFlow, so we use it, we train it uh, with PayPal, uh, we had uh, five, five, sorry, Bank of America, DHL, and Microsoft login. We use five samples. When I say five, I will explain what I mean. Uh, they, they have different uh, 
websites that they produce for PayPal. But when we collect the original one, for example, PayPal UK and PayPal.com, they have differences. Or PayPal, if, if you use the Greek language, PayPal is different than the PayPal UK. So the issue here, it was in order to do a good training because we train the algorithm of, on beneath websites. So we train, we, we train and we said, this is the good ones. Uh, you need to collect all of these um, variations in languages in order to train well the system. So we did that. And uh, the results were amazing. Uh, so uh, the precision was reaching reach basically 100%. We said here that the PayPal URLs, it was 85.71. The reason is what I explained you. If you don't do all of them, Greek, uh, I don't know, uh, English, um, German, um french all of these variations of paypal uh, you drop the accuracy so you need to train because it, it was detected as uh, malicious because of the difference on the pictures because as i said we make the training based on what is actually correct um so the results generally the overall results they were pretty high and uh, what it was needed more it was that initial idea okay we, we needed a larger training set additional uh, maybe indicators in order to hash the image make it better or not dependent with the language changes uh, and also other thing we could do more we were working on it anyway uh, it to investigate the new image generation machine learning process we're working on that not only on phishing but also in the uh, machine learning uh, uh, ids so we're improving the image generation we use other methods instead of being this and the idea was introduced there uh, we tried to use some fuzzy uh, to to alter the the color to make it more uh, readable better readable for the machine so concluding in all of this uh, research we do, we see very promising the binary visualization uh, based on the result we had and the improvements we do and the speed that is currently happening. Uh, ResNet seems uh, efficient, but uh, we're looking to improve uh, or to use something else. Uh, maybe we'll have more accuracy. Uh, yes, we we'll cover this. We're trying to improve this uh, the traffic, the image from the, the uh, for the websites. Uh, and uh, there is also uh, in this work that they present here, it could be extended and it could be used in the industry uh, for AI based uh, modular IPS modular, I mean, it could have module like phishing module um, inside the threads module, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it could be uh, used in the, in the future from companies. So if there is companies interested, they can reach us and we can discuss your future or provide them um, more on our research because it's currently evolving. That's it. I hope it was not, it was informative and interesting uh, and not tiring. So, uh, Thomas, back to you. Yes, Stavros, thank you so much for this interesting tour through um, malware and its detection possibilities. <laughs> So yeah, it's, it's every day's uh, work, I would say. So uh, I mean, receiving phishing emails is quite normal for uh, internet users. Right? 
the and idea. Yes, you, uh, you, you mentioned at one slide on one slide that uh, every twenty seconds a new phishing website is launched, right? Yes, yes, yes. Every twenty seconds. Yeah, I uh, I, I very much like the nice example, um, the the PayPal example you showed us with uh, with the binary visualization technique. Yeah, this is the phishing. Very impressive. And um, I mean, uh, yeah, it, it, you didn't talk too much about insider threats, right? That was another topic. Yeah, I said that I'm not going to cover that uh, yeah, yeah, right. because we don't have time. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and again, I mean, the idea here, there in the insider threats, it's extra research we did. Uh, we again uh, find a way to represent the log files of the systems into a picture. I see. I see. In order to uh, find your profile, to make your profile, uh, ah, this is okay, this is not okay. Yeah, yeah, that's very interesting. Oh, I see. All right. So um, uh, again, thank you very much for this very nice talk. And um, yeah, the floor is open to questions. So. Um, to the audience, if you have any question, please unmute yourself and ask your question. It's free to ask questions. I don't have a question in the chat box right now, so we can go uh, to. I have a direct chat. Uh, okay. Uh, so Thomas it says, if it was my data pre process, uh, Basically, we use some data set, yes, um, not all of them, a, a specific uh, amount of data. Uh, so we knew this data that they were malware. So we produce image for malware, we produce email for Benix traffic. And like this example, we produce uh, for phishing. We knew that it was phishing. So yes, some of them, they were pre-processed and also, um, we we publish them all of these images all of these things that we use also the pickup files uh, you can find them online we have uh, links if you search uh, if you go in the website in the end here sorry here here in this link in the scholar profile you will find also the data sets uh, edward great great Okay, so are there any other questions? Uh, hello, this is Merda speaking. May I ask a question through the uh, uh, here right now or? Yes, sure, please proceed. Okay, thank you very much for your really nice presentation. I met you uh, one other time in the NetSoft conference and you had a really nice uh, visualization of the attack data, IoT attack data on that conference and I really, like that. Uh, accordingly, I have two questions regardingly. The first is that when you are going to convert the raw data to the image, you're considering each row individually to be considered as a, 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 as a as an image. I mean, the pixel of the image, and you're representing with some numbers, which is representing the RGB. This is this was my first question. And I have another question related to the novelty base or one class classification. As I understood, you're going to use a CNN on the, to train your model with the label data. But uh, how do you think that uh, you'll be actually resist against a new malware which is not uh, exist in your training data set? Uh, did you apply any unsupervised or semi-supervised methods uh, to see that uh, how it's uh, the model, how it uh, react? Uh, thank you very much. I'm just listening. Hi, uh, may I read that? Uh, uh, yes, it was uh, uh, great that I, I was in NetSoft. Uh, it was, it's a nice conference as well. Uh, so about the, your first question, as I said, we have this buffer, which is have chunks of network traffic. So we get all the traffic, all this chunk, which is binary basically, 
and we make it image. So the question that is coming from this, so what if it's a piece of the malware and, uh, and it's beneath this piece? Uh, then it's, it's passing the system. But the next piece, it could be the malware or the, uh, the, the, the payload. Okay, so this piece, it will be excluded. It will be stopped. It will not go in the system. That means I break the malware. So even if you receive the malware and you don't receive the payload, it will missing a piece of code. When you try to execute it, it will not run. It will crash. Uh, so the image are produced uh, based on this chunk of network traffic. Now about the second question, uh, what was, uh, remind me again? It was related to the novel, actually, anomalies, which is not existent in your uh, training data, like unsupervised setting. Have you tried your model uh, with the unsupervised or semi-supervised learning? Because nowadays we have a lot of novel, uh, actually, malwares. They are changing, but if the their behavior was not in your data set during the training, so maybe the supervised learning would actually uh, cause some problem to detecting these novel ones. Uh, I just want to know that the, uh, the, did you investigate in this direction also, or you're planning to do, or how, how it would be? Yeah, we, we investigate the uh, unsupervised learning. Of course, we need to, to give the machine to understand first, okay? this is bad, okay, this is how bad it is. In order then, I mean, the idea always is to train the machine on the patterns. So based on research we did, uh, more research we did because we did also reverse engineering in a lot of malware. Uh, we identify that these black areas that I show below uh, in these pictures where we find it, these black areas, Okay, normally it's not good uh, sign. So when you see black areas, a lot of black areas, uh, it, it could be an indication of malware. So we train the machine on identify uh, these unique uh, things there in the picture. That means if a new variation is coming, okay, uh, it will not care the machine uh, because it will search for these specific patterns and it will drop them. Yeah, I understand. Thank you very much for your answer. Thank you. Okay, we have a raised hand here from, where is it? Check. Um, <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I, I'm enjoying your presentation. Nice research. Well done. My, my question is a follow up to the one you answered with regards to the data pre processing. I wanted to know if prior to the classification, with regards to the feature selection, when do, do you, well, after storing the, the, the previous feature for it to make up so that when it comes again, it can be dropped, what is the next step to get the new feature? For instance, is, is your work able to convert, you convert the binary to image? How do you determine that the right data is what is converted? do you really get the right meaning? How are you able to validate that? Because they are binary. You convert them into image before classification or before feature selection and classification. How do you validate that the binary conversion into image is the right data that is converted and some are not left out? That is my first question. Okay, the, the answer is before we went to the network traffic, uh, we went to actual malware, so we download, 
I don't remember now, 50,000 malwares. Uh, so when I say 50,000, not all malwares, all the were new, 2020, 2019, 2017, that's nice, nice malwares, not only for the normal web, but also we went a little bit deeper. Uh, so we download all of these uh, things and we analyze them using binary visualize. So, so first we analyze, we wanted to understand uh, what is inside the malware, uh, how this can be converted to a picture using a tool. Okay, we didn't touch the tool at all. So first we wanted to understand this ASCII, how it's been converted and if, you, and if it makes sense. After we understand from all of these samples of malware, which we, we, do it, we did it manually, as you understand, then we proceed with network and uh, we play with the, uh, let's say, with this buffer because we started with uh, 10 megabytes. It was big, it was taking time. Then we uh, play around one megabyte or, uh, uh, two megabytes, three. We play around with a lot of chunks of data in order to be sure that we catch what we want to catch. Uh, basically, it was, I will say, trial and error uh, in order to identify, uh, to see uh, how this network traffic will produce the best uh, results in our research. Uh, there, there wasn't a rule of thumb, ah, okay, it should be uh, this way in order to catch the malware. Uh, we wanted to have a specific amount of, of chunks. So this led us to reduce the size. Now I don't remember, I think it's one megabyte which we keep uh because we try with uh, uh 200 kilobytes 300 and we play around these values uh, in order to see where these exactly things here are catch and we also notice that the window of the tcp the, the the window size the the chunks of bytes that has been said it's important for the amount that we we're going to use because we wanted to catch the malicious activity. But because this chunk is continuous and we do continuous image uh, identification, uh, we, we catch them. Okay, I, I think uh, I, I've gotten your point, but I recommend that uh, we you way forward you find a way of reducing the inter interference of human experts in the experiment especially when it comes to the feature attraction and feature selection that can really affect the accuracy of the output and i think that should be checked or should be looked at going forward in the future look uh, there are uh, like in the uh, fishing, there is a, a work now that, that we're looking about combining uh, these results with some features, not all the features, because we believe uh, the features, because they change continuously, if you use a feature, you need to find the unique features that along with this will erase the accuracy. But even though with this uh, uh, image here again the feature sorry the features that we are going to use again it will be added in the picture so it will enhance the picture we're not going to use features as a feature but as an image again so the idea is to use only image we don't want to use features take the ip address i will convert the ip address to a picture and add it in the picture somehow Okay, thank you, Stephros. Um, so it's uh, it's one p.m. here in uh, Amsterdam, and um, I think we should close the session now.
and do, um, we have one request that was mentioning when we are talking about the uh, data that was the first question and the request is please share the link uh, with the audience so i encourage all our attendees to reach out to Stavros if that's with uh, Stavros and and ask for, can, for the link right? i share it already to everybody here oh, is the links cool. to the is is doi is yeah is doi. Perfect, perfect. Thanks so much, Stafford. All right, so we will close the session now. Thank you for attending this very interesting webinar. Uh, Stafford, again, uh, we are very proud to uh, have you in our webinar. It was a very nice talk, very impressive. And uh, everyone, please uh, check out our topical collection. Uh, on cybersecurity. And uh, if you have a paper or a manuscript you would like to submit, please feel free to submit it to the topical collection. And the guest editors will be uh, happy to handle the papers and me as well, of course. <laughs> so to everyone, uh, good afternoon and uh, have a nice uh, day or nice rest of the day and uh, goodbye. Thank you, Thomas. Bye-bye to everybody. Bye-bye.